My name is Ushan Alebuye. How old are you? Hi, oh, how old are you? Okay. Ma The National Aphasia Association describes aphasia as an impairment of language, be it the production or the comprehension of reading, writing, or speaking acquired from a brain injury. The key word here being acquired. So someone with aphasia was able to freely communicate in the past, but has since lost that ability. But living with aphasia goes beyond just losing your ability to speak or communicate with others. It redefines how you interact with other people, how you engage with your culture, and can even change your personality. As you saw in the previous clip, my dad knew what information he wanted to convey, that he was 56 years old, but he wasn't able to articulate it verbally. That's because my dad has transcortical motor aphasia. Today I want to show you the impact that aphasia has had on my dad, but more importantly, that despite this disability, he's still able to communicate and interact with his surroundings and with the people around him. This was my dad before the stroke. Him and my mom ended up fleeing from Iran at a very young age and subsequently became refugees for the next three years. Eventually, when they finally established in Canada, in many ways they had felt like their youth or the best years of their life had been taken from them. And so they kind of developed a hashtag YOLO lifestyle. Unfortunately, it caught up with them too soon. Two years ago, my mom came home to find my dad on the ground here. One left MCA embolectomy, two hemorrhagic strokes, 14 millimeters of midline shift, and two weeks of ICU later, he was transferred to a long-term stroke unit to begin his road to recovery. The very first thing that you learn interacting with someone who has aphasia is just patience. They need time to find the words to be able to express themselves. After my dad's stroke, it took eight months for my dad to be able to convey a thought to me that truly made me believe like my old dad was still inside there somewhere. And even then, it took about 20 minutes for me to understand what he was trying to say. And that was simply that now that his license has been suspended, I should take the car with me to Kingston. So let me show you some of the ways that my dad has learned to communicate. My dad used to start every morning with an espresso and a cigar. He could sit on the porch or at a coffee shop for hours and just people watch. So one of the first things that we focused on during his rehab was to get him to be able to order coffee on his own. You're gonna see a couple different techniques in practice here. So the first is just simply practicing. My dad always performs better if he has a sense of what's gonna come and if he can predict the conversation. So any situation where there's already fixed sentences that you kind of always use, which is mostly like small talk or uh, phone talk, if you say, hi, how are you? He has a fixed sentence to be able to say, good, thank you, how are you? And he usually will be able to respond correctly when he says that. So here we're standing outside of Starbucks and it's our first practice. Okay, Baba. Jana. Saikon order to be man begi. But it's your name is Sam. I love my very coffee shop. Okay. Saikon order to be man begi. With 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 the uh, Satan uh, one c c coffee coffee and uh, count uh, co how many coffees one one what about me uh, oh yeah two okay two <laughs> what kind of roast with with Okay, so we're gonna write it down, okay? I don't mean everything. Okay. My dad is still able to read. He just can only read short words or very short sentences. So if it's a very long sentence and if the words are too close together, he will mix them up. But if you spread the word out in black writing, usually on white paper, like something with good contrast, he will be able to sound it out and read it. So you'll see on the paper we wrote some of the key words that he's going to need to be able to speak. And it's really just keywords. So you don't want to add and the. So having had one practice, here's our second run. Hi. Uh, coffee, and I need to be with one coffee with my daughter. 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 And uh, uh, dark. Dark. Uh, very good. So already you can see that the second practice was a lot better than the first. So now we're ready to go try the real thing. Here we're in Starbucks, and he's gonna go order. Thank you. Anything else? No, thank you. 
So another part of my dad's stroke rehab was physiotherapy um, and just physical exercise. So here he's going to try to tell you a bit about his exercise classes. He's going to try to tell you what days they are, what time, and where they're located. Your exercise class? Yes. What days do you go? So sometimes, as you saw in the first clip of this video, my dad's able to write down what he wants to say, but he isn't able to verbalize it. He'll go grab this book and try to write it out, and then try to read it to make recall easier the next time. But he's actually used this notebook so often that he has certain things written in there like frequently, so he already has written down his classes, times, and days, so he can just refer to it if necessary, as opposed to every single time having to write it out. While that's less beneficial for his practice, sometimes the amount of time it takes to get a message across when you have aphasia kind of hinders the interaction especially if it's not a family member or it's someone he feels less comfortable with because often if he's nervous he'll make more mistakes or it'll be more difficult for him to say what he wants to say so here he was successfully able to write the days <laughs> Thursday. No. Tuesday. No, you're mixing them up, Bubba. Um, oh, aha. Uh -huh. He confused saying them out loud, but he was able to write down the right days. Another technique that we have used in the past, uh, before he was at this level, was just simply referring to a calendar and he could point to the days that he wanted. So next he's going to try to tell you the location of his classes. And so here he's going to use a map. But Angor Chef is in Yashun Bedi. Are you ready? Oh, in Kujo House. In Jo. In Chef Yabunye. In Jo Nanveste. That's Major Mac. Major Mac. Major Mac. In. If it doesn't say the street, you can ask me. I'll tell you what it is. Chef here. In Jo. In Yonge. In. Young. Young. But. In um in in Even with all these tools, there's always going to be aspects of their personality that you just can't get back. There's a lot of power in the words that we choose, and a lot of our personality shines through from our word choices, from how we decide to phrase things. You know, sometimes based on what slang someone uses, I can tell if they spend a lot of time on Twitter or if they listen to a certain type of music. And that's an automatic association just from a single word that someone has chosen to use. There's many words that have the same meaning with just slight differences and nuances, and you pick and choose which word you want for which situation. And when you have an impairment of language, um, whether it's aphasia or, you know, this is your second or third language even, you kind of lose the ability to do those things and you strip it down to the bare minimum. It's just the message that's being conveyed is more important than the flair with which you say it or how you let your personality shine through. And so despite all these tools and my ability to interact with my dad, I still feel like I haven't had a real conversation with him in a really, really long time. Me and my dad were both night owls and we used to have these long, in-depth conversations about really random topics like whether or not Lady Gaga was too avant-garde for this generation or whether or not the US government had created uh, the SARS outbreak as a distraction for some of the other things that were going on at that time. So that's something that we can't do anymore um, and I haven't had an in-depth conversation with my dad like that in so long. Other aspect which is the part that actually hurts the most for me to see with for my dad is just that he had an incredible love for poetry and since his stroke he just hasn't been able to recite poetry the same way. One of the biggest works is called Divane Hafez. She has in Divane Shere Bastava Hafez Hafez in Habane Divane Hafez the Farsi is beyond my level, so I won't be able to tell you if he's saying it correctly, but I can say that the intonation, the way he's trying to recite it, that's correct.
The significance of Hafez in today's culture is that many Iranians will have a copy of this book at their home and any time that you have a question that's heavy on your mind or you have like a worry or something like that, you can turn to this book and you ask it, the word is niyat, but you ask it a question and then you just open it to a random page and whatever poem pops up, it's said that that poem will sort of act as a fortune. Ey berendan makonay zahed pakisere که گناه دگری بر تو نخواهند نبید The Farsi that's used, it's kind of an old Farsi, and so being able to recite these, memorizing them, knowing how to interpret them is kind of a sign of intellect and it's something very admirable and respected in the Iranian community. And I can see how much it's hurt my dad to not be able to do that. Hopefully I've shown you that people with aphasia can still communicate and that they still are competent and they can still be really smart. <laughs> Hopefully I've also made you start to contemplate how much of your own personality is tied to the language that you use. Even more importantly, I hope that my dad's story has shown you that nothing in life is guaranteed or permanent. Take the time to enjoy what you have because things can change so suddenly. Whether it's one particularly large embolus being thrown off or electrical circuits in your heart kind of going haywire or a single mutation in your DNA's code causing you to create this army of immature cells. You really don't know how much time you have. With that, I'm going to leave you with a quote from one of my most recent reads, Wild Card by Marie Lu. And that's when I realized that at the end, we'd all wish for the same thing, just a little more time. Life is bigger, bigger uh, uh, than Aphasia. Bye-bye.